Thanks for joining me again. Today I'd like to talk about the Pure Gold Digger palettes. Love the name, love the packaging. It's nice and reflective. On the back, they have the color names. So very neat. And I did buy this so that I could get a Pure Mystery Bag. They were having a sale one time that if you spent so much you could get a mystery bag so that's why I bought this I had never tried anything from the brand and since then I've tried this and I had bought lava rocks at the same time I will link the review video on the lava rocks and the mystery bag video down below okay so here is what the palette looks like as you can see Oops. it's a pretty big size it takes up my whole palm and this is available for $36 on their site. And I feel that, and here's how the palette looks inside. You have a big mirror up here. And I do feel like it is a good weight. You know, it's not too heavy, but it's not too cheap and flimsy. So it's got a good weight to it. And let me scoot up close here so you can see better. Okay. So the colors are... Here's the eyeshadows on this side, and I'll start at the top. The kind of beige color is Aim High. The purple below it, 24-7. Then we have No Limits is the silvery gray, and the dark gray is Grind. Then here we have, this could be used as bronzer or blush, or you could use it as an eyeshadow as well. Motivation, a blush. Glambition and the highlighter is Glow Getter. So very cute. They also have the names on the back of the palette here. And let's see if this says anything else that's needed to know. Vanity Palette Eyes and Cheeks Gold Digger. It is has a shelf life of 24 months after opening it. So let's get started. I currently have a primer on and some concealer a instant age rewind is what I'm using at the moment so let's get started so I'm going to use I've used kind of all of I've used all the colors and I will say that this shade I haven't really used too much of I am NOT good at contouring I I have tried light hand, dark hand, or heavy hand, and just I'm not good at it. So definitely need more practice if I want to do contouring. So I'm not sure how much use I'll get out of that one, but I do like the eyeshadows. The let's see, the grayish glitter ones. When I tried this combination, by the end of the night there was some fallout below my eyes. It wasn't giving me raccoon eyes or anything but there was just a little bit of the glitter. Okay, so I'll put some on the brush here. And as you can see, there's not really much fallout on the pan. And I'll just do one eye and then I'll do the other eye off camera. But just so you can see how it goes on, just gives a nice base. And then I'm going to use, what, what, what do I want to use? I'm going to do the purple on the outer edge, outer V. And when I do the outer V one, I just like to kind of pat it on personally, depending on the color, but I find that I just get a better um, color and color pigment when I kind of pat it on and then blend it out. So as you can see, it is pretty pigmented. It kind of, there's a little bit of fallout. Should I should have showed you that, but I just wiped it away. Um, but there is a little bit of fallout, but nothing that can't be wiped away. So then I'm going to kind of go in just a little bit in the center here. I'm going to try this bronze, this bronze color. I haven't actually used that one for my eyes yet. I used 
every other one, but for some reason I hadn't used that. So I'm just gonna kind of put that in the center. Actually, that's a pretty color for the eyes. So if you're good at contouring, experienced at that, you probably could make that work. And then we're just gonna blend this out. Does anyone else have trouble when you blend out that then you ended up blending most of the dark color away? Okay, so I'm back. I finished my other eye, put on mascara, and as you can see, so I used just three colors, and I think that it's just a really pretty eye. Not doesn't take too long to do. So I would say that if, I don't wear foundation very often, but if you do wear foundation, I would say to do that after you've done your eyeshadow because there will be some fallout. I did have to brush it away. And here's what the palette looks like. As you can see, there's a little bit of powder kick up, kick back, kick fallout, whatever you want to call it. So just to, as an FYI, I would do your foundation and concealer last because I did have to reapply a little bit of my concealer. So let's go on to the blush. So both the blush and the highlighter are very, very pigmented. So have a very light hand and built because it's very easy to get way too much and look like a clown. So I'm just gonna tap it a little bit, the blush. And know if it's really coming off on camera in person like I already have enough blush on just that little bit I don't know though if you can really well yeah I guess you can see it see here is the other side with no blush and here is with blush so yes very very light hand very pigmented and it did last uh, most of the day when I wore it before anytime I have worn it pretty much everything in this palette was long-lasting for me okay so hopefully you can see that and the highlighter wow talk about if you want to glow this is the highlighter for you. I was using the Ofra highlighter and I thought that that was, you know, very pigmented glowing, but this one now has replaced that one. This one's moved up to number one spot. So here's on the brush, you can see that's just tapping like two times in, how pigmented it is. And let's see if you can see that. Yeah, I mean, I could already see it. Here, I'll just go once in. That was once with the tap of the brush. So with this too, you also wanna do a light hand and just build it up. And I'm not really seeing it come off, well, maybe as strong on camera as it is in person because in person, it really is glowing and if you want even more glow, you really could build this up. I don't put highlighter down my nose and the tip. I don't really get that trend. Um, nothing wrong if you like it. I just don't personally do it. Or on my Cupid's bow, I pretty much just like highlighter on the sides. So I'll just put a little bit more on. Okay, there you can see it. Isn't that amazing? And it even is more glowing in person. So, woo, yes, I like it. Okay, so let's see, I'll put on some lipstick, a little bit of powder, and be back. Okay, so I'm back, and just as a little extra, um, I'm using the Pure Velvet Matte Liquid Lipstick in the color Fever. Here's the packaging, here's what it looks like and the Dofa applicator. And I will say that a lot of the liquid lips that I've tried in the past are very drying. This one is not drying at all. 
it's very pigmented, creamy. There was still a little color transfer, but overall it was really good and very creamy for a matte lipstick. It almost felt like a regular lipstick. So if you want to give that a shot, shout. If you want to give that a shot. And let's see, I will say though that with this, since it does stay on, if you're using the dark color, you're probably already familiar if you use dark colors that you have to be kind of careful with it because it's very easy to get outside your lips. And if you do, it won't come off very easily. It does stay on. And then I also am going to put on, I have the Chrome Glaze in Heartbreaker. And here is this one. And it says that it's a high gloss, high shine lip gloss. And I will say this did have a lot of shine. Here's stuff applicator. But it is very sticky. So it's kind of, you know, like your traditional gloss. It's going to give some stickiness. But when you apply it over, it just uh, it does give a nice shine. Just going to clean off my Dofa applicator to get the dark color off. So it's a nice, I, I do like it, it's a nice gloss. I will just, like I said, that it it is sticky. So if sticky glosses bug you, I wouldn't recommend this one. But I hope that this was helpful to you. I would love to know if you have this palette, the Gold Digger, if you've tried any products from Pure, if so, which do you like? Again, this is 30, I don't know if I said this is $36 on their website and I will say that the all the colors in here for the eyes and cheeks the highlighter everything it would last you 13 hours plus so I hope that that was helpful I did say on my lava rocks review but I will talk about it a little bit here I like to if you're new to my channel whenever I do a review I kind of like to look into the history of the company and learn a little bit about them Pure was kind of hard to find that much information. They like to say that their mineral makeup is makeup with a purpose. They are 100% cruelty free. They are formulated in the US and unless they're noted, most of their products I should say, let me stand corrected, is formulated in the US and most of them are made in the US unless it's stated. So I was kind of bummed because I would have loved to feature them. Once a month, I make a video that focuses on a company that has their products are made in the US. So I would have loved to feature them, but they not, but not all of their products are made in the US. Like this one, the Gold Digger, it's made in the US. But if I remember right, oh gosh, I can't even see that little writing. Um, I don't think the all the lipsticks. Let's see, one's made in the U.S. Okay, so those two are made in the U.S. The Lava Rocks were not made in the U.S. and I don't think their mascara was. So some of their products are, you just kind of have to look. So I do like that some of them are. They're paraben, paraben free, gluten free, alcohol talc free. They are vegan friendly. So overall, I really do like this company, what they stand for as far as, you know, with the purpose and that they're cruelty free. I like that some other products are made in the U.S., which all of them were, but I do, and that they're long wearing. I like that. So I hope that this helped. Let me know down below if you did like this video. Give me a thumbs up, and I hope to see you back here next week. Thanks. Bye. Okay, I almost forgot to swatch everything for you. Okay, so we'll start with these top two, the ones that I use today. And as you can see, this is the light, the light one. And, you know, it doesn't look real pigmented on your eye. It's not a, you know, it just kind of gives you an overall base color. This is the purple. And I'm just going in once, so you can see. Okay, the the light gray, I went in a couple times because otherwise you just couldn't see it. And this is the dark gray. 
So it is really interesting. I find that when you swatch these on your hand, let me get the towel, wipe my fingers off, that they don't really seem all that pigmented. I mean, the dark colors do, but that metallic -y gray, this one is definitely more pigmented on your eye than it's showing up on here. Okay, and then we'll do the bronzer. It's the brown color. And the blush is right there. You can see that they are definitely, like you could see on here, that they're powdery and a little bit of chunky, I guess you would consider that. Here is the highlighter. So hopefully that helps. That's what they swatch like. But as I said, on your eye, oops, I dropped my towel. On your eye, I feel like they're definitely more pigmented than what they swatch. So, you know, don't let that fool you that you have to go in with a heavy hand. Okay, that's it.